Hi guys, Paul here, and today we're looking at the Lap RF Personal Race Timer. This is from Immersion RC. Uh, this is the one with a single receiver unit in it, and um, it's not the one with the eight receivers that's a full-blown race system. Uh, but having said that, for a personal training system, it actually works quite well. We've had it running with two quads, no dramas whatsoever, and uh, some of the guys that we know in Melbourne have actually been testing it with uh, four quads and have had no issues either. So it's actually working surprisingly well. So it's a 5.8 gigahertz race timer, so it's actually using your VTX4 timing. Uh, so you don't need to add anything else uh, to your uh, quad, which is really handy. Um, it runs on iOS and Android and does also support USB charging. Let's get this guy open and show you exactly what you get in the box. We've already used this, by the way, just showing you what you actually do receive with it. You'll get a sticker set from Immersion RC. They'll also provide you with some sort of card telling you to like them on Facebook. That couldn't hurt. And as far as support goes, you've got FPV Labs and um, their support email address. They've been really responsive on Facebook. That's the way we've actually been uh, um, communicating with um, Immersion RC at the moment. So this is the unit itself. Let's get this box out of the way. And it's quite a good little unit. Uh, over here is where you would actually have an external Bluetooth antenna if you want to go down that path. And we've got our USB. You could use this for lifetime or also charging. And on the back, we've got the power button and the bind button, uh, the Bluetooth ID name. And let's uh, get this guy open. That is the battery that actually comes with it. So it does actually come with a battery. And we've actually had this running probably around about six or seven hours, no issues whatsoever. So it seems to work quite well with it, quite um, economical on the power. So to power the uh, unit on, just hold it on, it's about a second or two, and it will power up. And there you go, and she's pretty much good to go. All you've got to do is actually bind it with your iOS or Android device. And um, we'll have a look at the software in a little while, but uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's pretty painless to actually operate uh, this RF lap timer, especially with the updates I've actually done in the last few days with the uh, software. Now, what you have is a little patch antenna for the VTX signal, and we have a Bluetooth antenna that sort of sits around that location there. Actually, what I might do is get this guy open and show you exactly what's inside. That'll probably make a little bit more sense. And essentially, once we got the guy apart, we had a look and um, worked out how the patch antenna, what, what the direction the patch antenna was actually facing, because I recommend actually having this in the middle of the gate, um, uh, just facing upwards, which would obviously work well. The only downside with that is uh, the unit itself is actually in the firing line in case a quad actually hits it. And um, we were also getting passes with Thomas Bruce passing really low and towards one corner, and sometimes it wasn't actually registering. So. Um, I think with um, the way we actually mount ours, this will make a little bit more sense if I show you exactly what's inside. Let's get this guy open. So you don't have to drill any holes if you do want to do the uh, mod for Bluetooth, but um, this is the little guy that just fell outside and it plugs that hole up if you're not going to be using it. I'm just going to pop this guy back in there because I'm not planning on doing the Bluetooth um, antenna mod as yet because I don't think I actually need it, especially the way in which we're using it. So first thing first, let's have a look at this antenna. This is your Bluetooth antenna, and I'll show you the orientation in a minute, and it'll make a little bit more sense why I've made a 3D uh, mount for it. Now what you can do is actually unplug that, plug in your own antenna, and um, you don't have to actually drill any holes or do anything flash with it, but you could actually run an external antenna if you so choose. So what we have is the patch antenna for the VTX, and this is what you want pointing towards a quad preferably away from the rest of the track and just uh, pointing towards the gate that you're going to be actually flying through. If I close this up, if you have a look here carefully, um, over here is where the antenna actually is. This is the Bluetooth one. So normally if you have it sitting flat on the ground, that antenna is actually sitting flat and obviously it's minimizing the actual range you're actually going to get out of the Bluetooth antenna. So what we try to do is actually orient it so it's sort of sitting up at about, about 40 degrees or 45 degrees and to the side of the gate. And I'll show you exactly what we've designed for it. So what we've done, these are the two 3D parts that we've actually uh, designed for it. This is the first one I designed. And location is actually pretty simple. It actually locates in here and locates on top of that. We've got a little lip there that actually holds it up. So you can't orient it any other way. Uh, it makes it pretty much foolproof. So if you can imagine if sitting on the corner of the gate, it's actually pointing towards a whole gate and it's out of harm's way, and your Bluetooth antenna is kind of sitting upright too, so you're getting a bit more Bluetooth range too. We've had it out to about 20 meters, no issues whatsoever. 
So this is the first one. And then what I did was I decided to redesign this guy and one that uses a little bit less uh, printer material. And this is the other one I designed. Both of these are on Thingiverse. You can download these and print them. Um, so print whichever one you like. This one uses less material, but um, I like the gray one. Thomas, is like, Thomas likes the blue one. So whichever one suits you guys best, that's the one I'd probably end up going with. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut to a video that shows you it in action. This was very last minute. We had a go at it the first time when we first got the uh, uh, timing system and it kept missing Thomas's laps. And uh, I believe there was a, uh, some issue to do with um, the way it was actually programmed and the documentation um, to do with the threshold. And that was sort of kind of, it was, it was kind of reversed and didn't quite make much sense. So hence it wasn't actually registering really fast quads. But they've since resolved that and this thing has been absolutely bulletproof. Uh, we have missed any um, laps at all. Uh, running it with stock settings, we haven't had to do any specific type of tuning. Uh, now we did tests with Helix quads. Um, these are the um, Impulse RC Helix quads running their VTXs on 25 milliwatts. We didn't have to play around with thresholds or, or do any adjustments. Thomas also has a micro quad uh, running a Furious um, micro uh, transmitter. And that was also set to 25 milliwatts, had no issues with that. And we also ran it with uh, a tramp on a test quad that actually Thomas has, and that was on 25 milliwatts, and we didn't have to play around with settings at all. And big thumbs up to uh, the guys at Immersion who've been so responsive, especially in the last week or so, with the continuous updates. Now the update, the software that I'm actually running at the moment, I don't think that's released yet on the App Store. That should be released pretty soon, um, but they're still making changes. They're implementing some new add-ons and all that. So I think the software side of uh, this Lap RF is going to be pretty epic. Now it's worth mentioning that with the last few software revisions they've done on iOS, and from what I can tell, uh, the guys reporting back on Android, it's been really solid. It doesn't seem to be missing any laps at all. Um, it just works. It's really quite amazing how well this thing actually works. So we're very, very impressed with it. Now, the feedback we've had from the guys using it on Android, they don't seem to be having any issues at all with it. So it looks like Android and iOS are both really solid at the moment. And they're continually doing revisions on it. Uh, Tony's done a fantastic job with the uh, programming on this. The interface is fantastic. You don't really need a manual for it. It's pretty self-explanatory. And if you ran it all default, I don't think you would have any issues unless someone was on 200 milliwatts or something along those lines. So what I'll do, will do is actually cut to the test footage. And the way we've set up this track, we've intentionally put two gates really close together and one's an over-under gate where the quad will actually gain a little bit of extra altitude uh, relatively close to the triggering uh, gate. And we've got the lap RF actually facing away from it. So the idea there was it shouldn't pick up what was behind it. And look, it didn't, it didn't miss a beat at all. And it was good testing with Thomas because obviously Thomas is a fast pilot um, and it really got to push it. And we've run it, both of us, no issues whatsoever. We know uh, uh, some of the guys at our local clubs have actually just started testing it, I think on Android. And they were running four pilots and they were surprised because it was actually working uh, with four pilots and working really, really well. So anyway, look, I'll cut to the footage. Um, so far, touch wood, this thing's absolutely brilliant product. Okay, so this is the uh, test phase of the LAP RF. I think that's what it's called. From Immersion. So we've got this guy set up and he's uh, set up at the gate. That's and um, can you show him what that... Yeah, so we've got two of these. One is that shape and the other one, I'll just take this guy off. You can hold them together. Is that shape there. So we've got two different ones. These are on Thingiverse and what they essentially do is point this guy up at an angle so you can head outside the gate and you actually do get better um, reception of the VTX. Yeah, and then also the added bonus is now you can put it beside the gate, which means yes. no, long, no longer in the firing line. So you just set it up, they put it down there. And you need the one, you can do the blue one if you want. Yeah. So the way this guy is facing is that there is a track and that's, this is the outside of the track. So we've got it facing away from the track, but um, just outside the gate. So essentially, um, we shouldn't pick up anything behind us because that's running a directional antenna and also the Bluetooth antenna is, actually, is now pointing towards us. We're gonna stand around 20 meters, I've already worked it out, 20 meters away from the uh, puck. Is that what they're calling it? I call it the puck. The puck, like the okay puck. then. And uh, we'll see exactly how it goes. <laughs> so uh, the timing system is actually connected. We're about 20 meters away from the gate, um, as in the puck itself. So we're a fair distance out. 
And at the moment, I've got this guy here monitoring channel one immersion and also channel five. So we're monitoring two channels. Um, it seems to be able to run two quads comfortably. We haven't tried more, but we will try more and see how it goes. And as far as settings go, these are the default settings that I'm running at the moment, and it's on 25 milliwatts. So um, we'll give this a go and see how it goes. You're ready to go, Tom? Yeah, let's do it. I've already started the race. I didn't realize I already started it. Yeah, you're clear to go. So that's the gate there. We're about 20 meters out. We're not running any external antennas or anything like that. We're just running Bluetooth off an iPhone. What are you doing? Setting the right thing. I was flying my okay. three inches before. Which ah, was a okay. different, uh, receiver that thing. wasn't going to work very well, was it? No, I was like, it's not arming. It's not arming. So, there we go. not sure how well you can see that. Hopefully, you can see that reasonably well. So, there's a the gate there. Thomas 126.51 Sorry? Yeah, I know. I had it running, that's why. BMS Thomas 12.48 BMS Thomas 11.76 So there's a quad there. Thomas 11.10 Thomas 10.86 So there we go, that was your fastest time. So we've got our average speeds, we've got the maximum. BNS Thomas 10.62 And he's coming into land. So there you go, that's the uh, LAP RF in action and it's working really really well. So just by tilting the um Thomas 13.93 still scoring times. <laughs> just, the gate. <laughs> just by tilting it up uh, at that 45 degree action, I think it's 40 degree angle, has made a phenomenal difference. Um, Bluetooth has been improved and so has the actual reception was in uh, picking up the quad itself. Um, also it looks cool. <laughs> it looks really cool and the updates are uh, Tony K has actually been working his butt off on this and done some really really good work as far as the programming goes for the software. I'm running actually a development build of the software at the moment and it seems to be working well and obviously once the testing is done I'm sure it's going to be up on the App Store. So touch wood this is our first run with the LAP RF and it's working well isn't it? Yeah. What do you think? I love it. So there you go. Anyway I'm going to get up I'm going to have a play at you now so I hope you enjoy that. See you around. See ya.